Good morning. And welcome you to the Worship and Union Center United Methodist Church. Today is the second Sunday we have been. The theme is peace. So I hope and pray that is wherever you are in this sanctuary or watching YouTube or on Facebook. I have hopes and pray that peace be with you and your whole family. Would you pray with me? Father, Prepare our heart to celebrate your birth joyfully. We thank you for faithfully doing what you promised long ago. It's when you sent your son to earth. So that we might have the chance to become part of your family. Let me the promise of your second coming inspire us to live with hope and purpose. As a way for your plan to unfold. Give us the patience we need. Remind us of the peace we can access when you, time, when you take time to still ourselves before you and remember that you are the only God we worship you this morning. We thank you that we are both peace and gracious God. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to light up the candle. Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in, a, in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today we read the candle of hope. Let this candle remind us of the great hope that we have in Christ the Messiah and God's promises. As we light the candle of peace, let it remind us to prepare our hearts for the coming of God.
remain standing with me as we say our affirmation of faith. This is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. For the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand You may be seated. Our New Testament reading today is from the book of Luke, first chapter, verses 26 through 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Amen. Now let's enjoy some special music from Eric.
Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Now we come to our joys and our concerns, any prayer requests that we might have. First we have thank you. This morning. Okay, Mr. H. Well, the prophecy was fulfilled on Thursday. It was 34 degrees. <laughs> uh, I was blessed. I don't know if all you other people were blessed, but it started out as a very cold morning, and uh, we had a numer num number of people come from our congregation to help pass out food, even in the cold, and the atmosphere was just electric. I mean, everybody was having a good time, and the cold didn't bother anybody, including the people that came for the food. Uh, we served 96 families. And uh, what a blessing it was. And I'm just looking forward to our food pantry here and uh, the, the number of families we can bless with that. Amen. Who's up next? Sheila. Good morning. Good morning. So we, um, a couple of things. I left brochures in your um, pews. No, all the seats aren't reserved, but it would be great if you could fill them for us. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of great information in here, our Christmas service, Christmas Eve service. And this is the information about our new indoor pantry that starts December 15th. So a lot of wonderful food. Um, there may be somebody that you know that would benefit. And the reality is, I'm sad to say, there's a lot of working poor these days that are working full-time um, that still need help. So um, brochures are nice. You can give them this and say, you know, we'd love to see you. We have an indoor food pantry. Um, it's a great way to let people know about our church. Um, there's a new food pantry board out in the narthex. Take a look at it. There's an opportunity to sign up. We'd love to have you. And... Um, I know there's something else I wanted to talk about, and I don't even have a clue what that was. So, well, anyway, well, we're gonna we're gonna need help. Yeah, on the 13th, yep. unloading our first um, order of food will come on the 13th, um, and that will be at a minimum a thousand pounds of food. That's a lot of food to have taken off a truck, unloaded, and put on shelves. So if you are available, please, please sign up. And we also need workers. We'll be open every Thursday from 3.30 till 7. We chose those hours because we have a lot of people that work, and they can't go to the food pantries because they're in the morning. So this will give people a chance to come after work and in the afternoon and every third Saturday. So keep that in mind. Anything else that anybody, yeah, hang on one second, Linda, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm so excited. I just want to thank everyone for the prayers. My daughter did make it home. Excellent. It took a little longer because there was actually seven accidents in oh. Rue, Virginia. Oh. Thank God she wasn't one of them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wonderful. I have a couple prayer requests. One is from uh, Glenn and Claudia Godoy about their daughter, Jessie. She did have a stent put in her brain successfully. There's some change in medications. They hope for improvement. Um, so she still needs our prayers, and Glenn and Claudia need our prayers as they are uh, essentially caring for her right now. I'd also like prayers for my younger brother, Tim. His biopsy of his prostate came back with cancer. Uh, he will have a bone scan soon to see if it has spread beyond that. So thank you for your prayers. A reminder that Saturday is the Young at Heart Christmas party. It's at the Blue Dolphin on noon, at noon. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Please sign up so we can tell them uh, how many are coming. 
<laughs> Terrible getting old. <laughs> I forgot one more. Um, my son, Matthew, his youngest daughter, Savannah, and her mother both have COVID. Oh, no. Uh, so far, Matthew and the next older daughter has not contracted it, but we hope they won't. Uh, but just pray that they will have a quick and complete recovery. That's Savannah and um, Angela. Uh, going along with the food pantry, there will probably be a need for like uh, dish soap, uh, laundry detergents, and things like that. And Maybe if, like, if you're in a grocery store and you go buy something that looks like a great deal, pick up a couple extras and bring them in for the people that are taking advantage of the food pantry. And secondly, it, this is kind of strange, but Debbie and I had a uh, almost a little epiphany the other day at the Dollar at the Dollar Tree. Debbie went there to find candles for Wesley. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> for the, they didn't have any candles for their, for their advent wreath. Advent wreath. <laughs> and you need three purple and a pink, right? Went there and they had boxes of two purples and they had a box with one purple and one pink. <laughs> I mean, what are the chances that you're going to find that? <laughs> she brought them over and she was like, I don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> They were packaged that way. And they were really. packaged that way. Yeah. God works in mysterious God works, ways. Even at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> One last reminder that Wednesday night um, is an administrative board meeting. This is a very important meeting. If you are on the administrative board, I am asking you to please attend this meeting. One other thing I should mention, Ronnie's talking about God moments, and I thought I really need to share this God moment. So, um, you know, God is in the middle of our lives every day. Sometimes we acknowledge it better than others, but he is really in the details. And Debbie asked me the other day, so do you have an in with Channel 12? And I said, well, no, why? And she said, well, I saw our, our food pantry get advertised three times, the nighttime news, the morning news, and the noon news on Channel 12. No one knows how Channel 12 got that information of all the food pantries and mobile pantries there are to advertise. They picked ours. And so there's God in the details um, telling people about our little church and the food pantry that we're running. So he's just, he's in the details, he's in our lives, and I just praise him for that. Amen. Anybody else? Any other prayer requests <clears throat> before we go to prayer? Okay, let's take a moment to bow our heads and close our eyes. And we'll silently come before our Lord, and then I will. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this Advent season with the anticipation of the birthday of your Son. Father, we're so grateful that we can all come together in this beautiful sanctuary to await the birth of your Son, the celebration. Father, we've heard prayer requests this morning for the Bedoy family. We pray especially for Jesse, having gone through surgery and decisions that have to be made, Father. I ask that you be with, with all of them as they're working together, Father, as a team, so that Jesse can be 
whole again and be able to live on her own. And <clears throat> We ask for your blessing on that family, Father. We're praying this morning for Hannah's brother, Tim. Father, um, we ask that as he goes for scans and, and more tests, that you be with him and um, hold him tight, Father, and let him know that you are there and guiding every step of the way and that um, people back home are praying for him. We're praying this morning for Savannah, and we're praying for Angela, Father, that um, <clears throat> have come down with COVID. We ask, Father, that you be with the rest of the family, that they don't catch this nasty, nasty disease, Father. We pray for those that are in the nursing homes, Father, where the COVID epidemic is starting again. Father, you know who those are. I ask that you guide and protect each and every one. Father, we thank you for blessing our pantry. It's all you. It's all you, Father. Just a simple idea, and look what you've done for us. We thank you. So, Father, as um, we go about our service, we ask, I ask that you be with each and every one of us this this day and this week, Father, as we travel and shop and just be with us, Father. Guide us, protect us on the roads as you did with Amy on her way home, Father, last week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let's stand and we'll sing our next hymn in the bleak midwinter. Maybe see it.
Our message today is from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 through 5. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her heart service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has listened from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make strength in the desert highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become the leather, the ragged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together to worship you, to live to praise, and to give our concern and blue. Now, Lord, as we have heard your message, your words from our Holy Scripture, as we consider what they have to say to us, I pray, Lord, that is, you might use me, that your spirit might give us and give me the words, give me the word to bring this me message. A message from you for all of us. I pray this in your name. Amen. A blue Christmas. Christmas is just around the corner of this year. It's where do you feel that Christmas is coming? It's when we turn on the radio stations, Christmas carols are playing. Christmas trees and decorations are in everywhere. TV commercial targeting this season is overflowing. Yeah. These are all. This one makes us realize that this is a truly Christmas time, right? But there's one more thing. That is, if we can't live out this season, it is nothing other than family gathering. So, my youngest one, Yajun, has already excited about the idea that whole in family will gather and watch a movie together, having pizza during the holiday season. He believes that watching together and eating together is going to be a good enough way to bond, to bond relationship for each other. However, and anyway, like I said, you know, there's a growing concern about to me because as in the family gathering, it's whether we love each other or hate each other. Is there any way, I guess I will have to spend this Christmas day and Christmas time and watching a movie, home alone again. <laughs> As my youngest one says, is when he considers the fact that peace begins within the household, the director of a home alone deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. Because that movie, it makes a huge impact in bringing peace to the family every Christmas season. And it's more, more than anything, now the Home Orleans series <laughs> helps to make time fly if we watch one movie a day. Home Alone 1, then watch Home Alone 2 the next day, and then watch Home Alone 3 on the next day. And the four and five, and the next and next to the day. So from the parents' point of view, it is a good deal to watch the movie series because they could have saved time, energy, and money 
to take care of their children at Christmas time. Yejun's plan seems like a pretty worry-free Christmas break. And to see him persuading people, it occurs to me that maybe we don't have to worry too much about what he will be. Don't you think? But But on second thought, there are so many movies that use Christmas as the main subject. So how did the Home Alone leave such a powerful impression on people to make it into a legendary classic film to enjoy around Christmas? A lot of people are able to relate to the story of Home Alone despite the fact that it is pre and unlikely for the events of a movie to happen in our real life. The familiar feeling comes from the title of the movie, Home Alone. There are so many people who feel alone during the cheerful and noisy Christmas holiday. Indeed. It's one of the well-kept traditions around the Christmas time is wishing others a merry or happy Christmas. The greeting is a good fit for such a joyful and blessed day. But there is also another term used at Christmas time nowadays, the saying, Blue Christmas. It is used for sad people, or a group of people, including church members, who go through hard times. It's a greeting used to comfort and acknowledge the people who may have gone through a breakup or divorce around the holidays, or something who is unable to spend the holidays with the love of the one due to unexpected say goodbye and accident. Let me tell you some testimony of a blue Christmas in the internet. I haven't known fear at different times in my life, but I have to admit the fear I felt in 2020 is when I heard that my mother had an incurable cancer was beyond anything else. I feared having her to say goodbye. The night she passed away, my dad and all of us, boy and girls, they gathered around her bed and watched as she spoke her last word of love and took her last breath. The moment that I had to feel the so much to have it come and I believe that it is, will always be with me as though it happened a minute ago. My world has been forever changed. But for me, that means everyone's world should have been changed forever. But the next day, as I saw cars driving by our house, people walking around the street talking and laughing. And as I looked at them, and I looked all around me, I realized that the world was still tiny as it always had. I wanted to scream at the time, stop! Don't you know, don't you know it's what has happened? Stop! I didn't care that it was morning and the sun had risen just as it had every other day. My life was consumed by darknesses. It didn't matter what anyone said. I was lost in a darkness that I didn't feel would ever be lifted. It was on the day of my mother's burial that a bit of light broke through. It was a cold winter day, but outside, as we were heading to the gravesite, it was snowing those really big flags that seemed almost fake. It was beautiful. I had always loved this type of snow. It seemed to bring bring, bring up the sky just as the snow bring up the world, God wanted to light up my world. 
God knew the pain I was feeling and found ways over the next few years to touch my heart and to bring me out of the darkness. I had always known God and His Son, Jesus Christ, but it took experience the one thing I feared most in life, and living in the darkest of moments to understand more clearly the words from the Gospel of John. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. No matter how dark life seemed to be, after mom died, the love of God through his son Jesus Christ could light up my world. Because of the timing of mom's death, the advent and Christmas season always bring a reminder of the dark, that dark time. The memory of those days will always be with me But because Jesus Christ lives in my heart, I know that darkness can never really overcome the light. I pray that as we all remember our darkest moment, when maybe face the darkness ahead of us, that is we'll see if even on your glimmer, the brightest light that came on Christmas Day. Come to the manger of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and see the light, and may He truly light up your darkness this season and forevermore. Amen. I also still remember as a pastor a story, of, a story from one of our brothers last year. After the Christmas Eve service last year, Everyone was sharing, happy, a friendly greeting. But there was one of our brothers who told me something unforgettable after we greeting. Pastor, today, today has been one year since my beloved younger brother went to heaven at this time last year. As the tears gathered in his eyes. I have a slight feeling that I understand the meaning behind those tears. The beautiful feeling of wanting to spend this joyful, heartwarming moment with the loved one, but knowing that you can't do that anymore. The empty space that they left behind feels even bigger at this time of year. It is heartbreaking. This term... Blue Christmas it does not only cover mental and emotional difficulties, but also physical ones too. For those who are unable to get away from the cold and enjoy a warm meal in a warm place, this Christmas is as blue as ever. We're living in a world where Everyone has high ambitions and keeps looking and shooting higher. But Jesus came to the world in the opposite ways. Human want more powerful and more success. But when Jesus came to down to the earth, he went from the highest level down to rock bottom. Jesus' life, which is ended after 33 years, was not a festive red color. But it was actually blue. His suffering started from the moment he was born in Manger and lived an unfortunate life on this earth. This is what it says. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in a human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died the commercial criminal's death on a cross. Why? 
Because why did they endure all of these things and choose such a blue life for himself? Why did Jesus Christ live to live on this earth alone? The answer is a mystery. But one thing is clear. He came to this earth because of the love that he had for us first. And that fact, because the source of comfort for those who are trapped in sadness and suffering today. We seek comfort and safety. But this world we're living in is not like that. We live in an unsafe world with the cancers, with accidents, with the discriminations, with illness, and with war and sadness. And we are not safe from the many things that hurt our hearts and minds and physically. But we surely know how Jesus came to this earth and where he is sitting now and who he is with. So we ask his children of God, know who we must abide in. The Lord tells us so in this passage today. Comfort, comfort my people, say your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Amen? I hope this Christmas season we also think of people who are suffering and pain. And also through there is we're going to have a celebration, Holy Communion today. So if you are a member or not, please come to this table with a heart repenting to the God. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. This may the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in power of your Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Singing Sanctuary.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and God and good to give thanks and praise the Almighty God and everlasting Father through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when He humbled Himself to come among us in human flesh, He fooled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confidence that your promise will be filled, we now watch for the day when Jesus Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so with and so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever praising you and saying and God Father and Almighty heaven and earth are full of your glory who stand in the highest who stand in the highest and holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And so, in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took breath, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, And take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the suffering was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as open as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For all your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and this gift of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with, one with others, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, Almighty God, Father, our God, now and forever. This is the body of Jesus Christ broken for you and me. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you and me. If you're ready to take this bread and this wine, please come forward. Please, Debbie, or Comforter, as seems to me.
Let's pray together. We thank you, God, for breaking into our world and pouring into our lives and our experience. We thank you, God, for this meal of thanksgiving and the story of love, grace, hope that is terrors. Amen. Let us praise our God, the light who is coming into the world and us. Let us sing together, Emmanuel, we come to the light. Let us pray, Father God, we know that you endure going through the deepest and darkest place so that you could be by our side in our times of sadness and hurt. We may not be able to fully understand all of the overflowing and overwhelming and hard times that our brother and sister are going through. But I pray that we may become a source of a true comfort for them. Father, please give all of us the peace that you provide. And as children of God, let our hearts be with our brothers and sisters during their painful and sad time. And now, as we go with the confidence to love and serve God, and may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you. And give you peace and joy wherever you found yourself this week. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.